Hi there, Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna take a look at the brand new mushroom, magic mushroom brushes, or sponges, from Local King Rubber Stamps. This is what they look like brand new. They have these little clear acrylic bases to keep them organized, and they are sold in these little containers like this that keeps them, like if you wanted to, you know, store them, take them with you and not get ink on stuff, you could just put them in here and not have to wash them, which is kind of, kind of neat. Um, so we're gonna take a look at them, we're gonna see how they compare to other blenders that have been around for a while, and I've been using them a bit and I'll give you my opinions. I wanna be completely upfront with you, these blenders were sent to me for free for review purposes from Local King Rubber Stamps, and, um, I'm gonna share what I've learned with you. So these are some backgrounds that I've made. This one I did just by taking the sponges, um, inking up a piece of cardstock and stamping a rock background over them. I really like the way that turned out. This one was done by stamping a raindrop back background, then inking it up with blue and purple, and then using a water brush just to go over the bubbles because it's water reactive ink and it like kind of, and I blotted it and it lifted up the color a little bit so it gave me a little three dimension. Uh, same technique here, but with different colors. And with this one, it's the same stamp, but I used a clear wax crayon just to color in the bubbles before I inked it up. So a couple different fun techniques with that. The Lisa from Local King Rubber Stamps has a technique with that on her YouTube channel using glossy accents to mask the bubbles, and that's fantastic looking, and that's where I got the idea. Um, this is just tapping the sponges down. You use more pressure, you get a bigger, darker circle. You use less pressure, you get a lighter circle. This was stenciling. This was a torn paper technique. This was a torn paper technique with stenciling over with black. It worked really well. This is just multicolor stenciling. I think these are best for stenciling, quite frankly. This was uh, just pressing a dirty stencil onto a piece of cardstock and then just sloppily inking over it for distressed. And there was another, um, another background. And another fun technique is to use the sponges to color an image and then die cut it out and make a card. I did that here too, and there's a tutorial up on this on my YouTube channel. Did the background and the uh, focal point with that cut, with that coloring, and there's just an example of how you do the coloring. Then you die cut it, and doesn't matter how sloppy it is. So, fun things you can do with it. Um, but is this better than anything you already have? Well, let's take a look. So, I've got a bunch of scraps of um, of cardstock around where I didn't like the uh, what I did on the opposite side, so we'll, we'll make good use of those. So let's first just show you um, applying the ink to the paper. Because if you've used like your Ranger tools or your homemade dabbers, I, let's see, I've got one of my homemade one here. This is just a cosmetic sponge that I folded in half and hot glued into a bottle cap. I use that all the time. Let's see, I've got Ranger ones. Let me see if I have that color. I do, let me grab a... Let me grab that color here so we can compare these and grab the handle. These are the Ranger sponges, which I never really got on very well with, I have to be honest. Um, I always had awful edges. And then we can compare them to some of the brushes. So let's first um, try these with this ink. Let's do it. Let's get a fresh, let's get a fresh piece of paper here. And we'll just do some blending in from the side. And I've got a Harmony ink pad, which is very similar to like a Tim Holtz Distress ink pad. So with the Magic Mushrooms, you want to load it up good. I like to rock it around, make sure I get those edges covered. And you can do a couple things. You can very gently tap and get a very soft effect like that. Just, you know, tap it. But you will get some edges. Or... You can just kind of like do the swirl thing like you would do with um, with your other blenders. But something you want to remember to do is take a water bottle and give it a couple spritzes before you get too carried away. Um, I've been using these all day, so they have been spritzed. But I find that it really does help to spritz, well, maybe not really frequently, but maybe every fifth time you add ink. So I'm still getting lines with this. Um, you don't have to go in circles. You can drag it out. This has never been my favorite technique with a sponge brush either. I do find that if you just kind of get, be patient with it and keep layering and dragging out, you can get a pretty good uh, fade or rouge effect. But I still have some lines there and that could be my inexperience with that. I'm gonna do the same thing with a ranger pad here. Make sure I get that good and inked up. 
I've never spritzed these before, but that might help. I don't know. I'm going to go in from the other corner with that. I do find it's got like a little bit of a softer effect. I get a little bit more, um, I get lighter, but it does seem to be a little bit softer. I'm surprised actually how well this one's working because I always seem to, I've always struggled with the sponging. Please excuse the, uh, the background noise. Okay, that one actually, that worked really well. And they'll do our, my homemade one, which I always found worked the best for me probably because I was the most used to it. And I'll do that in this corner here. Now let's kind of drag it in. And I'm getting a good result with this. And it could be like, my good result with this one could be that I've used this, the same sponge for so many years that it's just so saturated with ink that, um, that it just gives me a really nice, nice effect. I'm actually surprised at how well I did with the Ranger one because usually that's the one that like, throws me for a loop and I can't get a really good impression from. So I am getting some edges with this, just from the edges of the um, of the cosmetic sponge. But you know, they're pretty comparable. Now that I go back and look at this one, I feel like the ink is leveled out a little bit and and it's you know giving me a pretty good, like a stronger effect, but it's it's softened out quite a bit. Now let's do a quick stencil and see how those three effects um, work with a stencil. I can show you, you know, I can show you really quick before we're done. Let me grab a, um, let me grab a color duster and let me show you that. These are the Judy Kin color dusters. This is what I would tend to grab the most because um, I had these before, the life-changing brushes. They give you more of a softer rouge effect. And I really like that. Um, it's a little bit more coarse of a blend than what you would get from, say, a um, like a, a life-changing brush or whatever you want to call that brush. Let me just find a big one here that I can use. And let me find something that I can just kind of mask an area off just so I can show you. Inking off from something, how that, how that would work. When I use these brushes, I get a much finer look. However, it's so light that if I want a darker effect, I have to keep going back and back and back, and it just takes a lot longer. So, you know, it just depends how, what's the concentration of ink that I want and how long do I want to spend on that project. So that would be the, br that's the, probably the smoothest brush, uh, blend is from the, you know, popular, brushes, toothbrush style brushes. Next would be the coarser but still smooth and light color duster. And then the foams all behaved pretty well. The mushrooms gave me a darker, more concentrated ink. Um, well, that probably could use, my, my brushes probably could use a wash. So uh, they, they all perform pretty well. Now let's try uh, with a stencil. I'm going to grab a fresh piece of paper for the stencil here because the other ones had a little bit of smudge on it. I don't want to be um, I don't want to be biased. We'll use the same color again. And I'm going to grab a really fine stencil. And I did a brush comparison last year using the stencil that you can look back if you're curious. So we're going to start off with our magic mushrooms. And we'll do the magic mushrooms. I'll do the magic mushrooms on this side here. And I'm just going to pounce. I like that I can cover a lot of ground really quickly and I don't have to reload. And look at that, it's giving me a really good even application. And now I will try the Ranger tool. It's a little bit coarser. I feel like it's covering about the same amount of time. Maybe it's taking me a little bit longer because the head is just a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to do my homemade one. Which is smaller than the other two, so it'll probably take a little bit longer. But a cosmetic sponge and a bottle cap, you really can't beat the price on that. And they've held up really well. I think I've only had to replace a sponge in a couple colors. This one looks like it might be due though. It looks like it wants to start breaking apart. But it's still getting the job done. 
Okay, so we've got homemade, and then we've got the ranger, and then we've got the magic mushroom. So let's lift it up and see. Um, I got a smoother, darker look with the magic mushroom. I got a little bit more texture, but still a good look with the ranger foam. And uh, actually my homemade one didn't fare quite as well, probably because it was smaller and it's a little bit, it, you know, it's not a uniform shape like the other ones are. Um, and then I, let's just do, I'll just do a brush here on this one, then we can compare. I feel like I want to, let's do an R for ranger. Magic Mushroom and H for Homemade. Before I set this aside and completely forget what I've just done. But you know what guys? The Choose whatever you like because I still find that the difference is pretty minimal. So I'll do the, the color duster over here. Which I feel like it, they don't hold as much ink as the sponges because you have to you know, you're just pretty much getting ink on the tips of the bristles. But it's still a pretty look if you want that more rougey look. So that's our color duster. I like these things, these are awesome. And uh, then we'll do the fancy schmancy uh, kind of life change. This isn't a life changing brand, but they're the company that made it popular. Oh, that's pretty. That's really soft. It's soft and refined. Whereas the Judykins is soft, but a little bit more coarse. Okay, oh, that's so pretty. Um, so I definitely got a crisper look with this, this brush versus the Judykins. So let me just do, let's do makeup brush. I don't know what to call that. Let's. I'll just draw a picture. Looks kind of like a little sperm. Sorry about that, guys. And color duster. Um, yeah, that's more of a soft, uh, dreamy look. That one's more crisp. And we compare it to the Magic Mushroom, which gave you a really crisp look, like the like the life changing brushes. But it was this is denser, and that's more uh, soft. The Ranger one gives you a pretty dark look, but it's not quite as crisp. And the homemade one, very similar to the Ranger, you get a um, you get a decent a decent uh, density of color, but it's not not as crisp as the as the um, two new brushes on the block. So there's a little comparison. Um, these are kind of neat. I don't know if you need them if you already have the Ranger tools or how much um, advantage they'd give you, but each one has its own handle, so you wouldn't have to be juggling the foam pads. There are 10 different colors, so you just kind of pick the color that's closest to the ink pad that you're using. Of course, it does change in appearance from being like brand new to once you use it. So if that bothers you, seeing ink on your materials might not be the best option, but um, great for stenciling. They're really nice for stenciling. Okay for ink blending. Um, we could do kind of try to do a little gradient before we go. I've got another fresh piece of cardstock that hasn't been used. Let's see, let's try to do a little rainbow blend here with just the magic mushrooms. Let's put these other things away. I think with blending tools, honestly, the more you, the more you get to use them, the better you get at them. So, um, so kind of keep that in mind. Try not to dismiss a tool as being bad until you've taken a chance to use it. And if you can, if you've got a friend that's got it, or if you can go to a stamp show once they start opening back up again, try to use theirs. Try to use one at a show first. Get a demo. Ask how it. You know, ask how to use it. That's what the people are there for. They're there to help you. I mean, they're there to sell products, right? But they're they're ultimately there to help you. I feel like I get a lot more ink on these than I do on other blending tools, and I think that can be great for stenciling because it doesn't go under the stencil or anything, but I think it can be really difficult for ink blending. So that might be an issue. I decided to start with yellow on this because I just figured it would be, might be a little bit easier to, to start with yellow and then work out from there. I'm gonna go to an orange. Maybe if I just, maybe if I just kinda like gently blend Gently tap up. 
And you'll have to keep in mind that I don't do a lot of foam blending. I usually use a brush or a brayer. Uh, I'm going to give this a spritz. Two squirts of fine mist water. I think that's a pretty important step too. Yeah, I've, I'm struggling here. But you know what, you do a background like this, then, this, then you stamp something cool over it and it looks great. So um, I think it's going to take practice. Even though I've been using these most of the week, I'm still a little out of practice because I've never really been that great at foam blending. So I think my bottom line on this would be they're great for adding intense color. They're great for stenciling. Like doing the ombre blend with a torn paper strip like I did here, because the colors are so intense, it worked really well for that. I did my yellow first, by the way, and then I just kind of worked either way from there using a torn paper as a mask. That worked great. Um, but because you can get a really easy solid band of color, I find a hard I find it hard to get a subtle band with this. Oops, no, wait a minute, what the heck was I doing? Was I using this color? That's what you call user error, guys. User actually, this is kind of pretty. It's like a sunset. Ooh, that would be a pretty sunset. Yeah, let's turn it this way. Let's turn it this way. That's pretty. Um, So, they're kind of pricey. I think the set is like 40 or 50 bucks for the 10 ink blending tools with the stand. They're $4 a piece. Uh, and they come in, I think you can buy them and like just buy one if you want to, to try it out. That might be the best way to do it, although shipping might be kind of expensive unless you're in Canada. They are um, a Canadian company. Let's do purple now. So that's good for, for folks in Canada. I don't think they're that expensive to ship to the United States. I know at stamp shows she would like if you if she was out of something you could buy it and she would ship it to you for free. I really like their products. Their stamps and dies are wonderful. I'm not so sure about the blenders, except I love them for stenciling. And I've been using them quite a bit. I'm just gonna go back in and try to blend those colors together. That's not working as well, but Pretty sure that could be user error because, because uh, I am not that great at foam blending. Let's slap a stencil over it though, and stencil with some black because I think that would look really cool. I got my big bucket of stencils next to me. Let me find something good to use. Oh, I should have done that. Earlier. Ooh, that's an... Oh, this one's cool. That might look cool. Oh, I bet that will look really cool. This is a memory box stencil. I'm going to use black. See, I've got the holder, but would you think I'd ever put anything in the holder? No, I'm going to let it all pile up on my table until I set my arms in it. Because that's how I roll. Because now I can't find any color of ink that I need. <laughs> Here we go. I want the black. Black soot. And we'll get a black mushroom. So I think they're cool. I think you know if you're if you're willing to practice with them, then they'll probably work just fine and dandy for you. They're fun for backgrounds. They're great for stenciling. I hope there's enough that I can grab onto with the stencil. This is such a dainty stencil. I think it's by Memory Box, and it's really pretty. But man, oh man, it is so delicate. <laughs> You have to be really careful not to uh, not to move it while you're working. So I figure if we just kind of do a few like real time, just little demos here in this review, that that would kind of help you decide if they're for you. I know it's fun to have lots of different blenders. I was just looking through my blending box where I have like blenders for different media, and it's like, oh my gosh, I have so many. Do you remember the old um, color box styluses? Oh, I loved those. Those were a foam blender, but they were like, they were more like a makeup sponge foam than a, than like the Ranger foam, and I had really great luck with those. Uh, those, those tiny little, well, I got one right here, actually, I grabbed it just for like a walk down memory lane. Remember these? 
Oh my gosh, I love those things. Yeah, I and it's like I, I would use them. I would still use them, except I don't think they make them anymore. And if I use them, I most of the cards I make, I'll do like a video for. And then if people can't get the supplies, they'll be disappointed. Um, especially if it's something that works really well and is really fun. So I don't want to do that to people. And then I don't tend to think to use them just... Sorry about that, my battery died. <laughs> I out-talked my battery. Um, and then I don't think to use the, you know, use them on my own for my own personal projects. And then they just sit in a drawer, being, you know, relics of the past. Okay, let's take a look at this. Oh my gosh, isn't that a cutest thing? Oh, that's so adorable. Oh, that's going to be such a fun background. Look at these two together. Aren't these fun together? So, yeah, definitely wonderful for stenciling. Um, blending, I'm not so sure, but I think that could be user error because I've never been a really talented sponge blender. We'll go back here and look. Um, I like that you get a really uniform, solid color when you want to, like here on that. Um, I would say that's probably what it's best for. And coloring images, um, they're really cute. There's something different. They definitely work, um, but whether they're going to replace something you already have or just be like, whether they're going to be something new or just be a duplicate, you know, that's up for you. I don't know what you have in your stash. I don't know what you need for supplies, but um, but I really like them for stenciling and covering a large area quickly. And of course, you know, if you want to do some really soft, um, some really soft blending. This is one of their stamps. Isn't that cute? If I want to do like a little soft blending, and now my, my, my first... Like instinct would be grab my color duster and just kind of rouge things around on the edge because I have really good luck with that. I'm very comfortable with these. Um, so to do that with the blenders, I do have a little bit more more trouble. I'd probably start just kind of ven very gently, kind of tapping and just trying to keep my um, my pressure. But you are going to get a stronger color, just like you'd get a stronger color with a ranger tool versus like a uh, a color duster or one of the life-changing brushes. You know, you can definitely get a similar effect, but it might take you longer and it might not be quite what you want. And again, the ranger one, which actually worked surprisingly well for me today. You can do a gentle brush up and get a really nice rouge. I think that these drag a little easier and those pounce a little easier. So it just depends on what you want. You know, and I know I'm dragging up some crud from my mat when I do that. Um, so, you know, it's up to you. Do, you. do you want them? Are these useful to you? They're not gonna look like this very long. You know, if you wanna buy some, put them on your shelf because they're pretty. But um, I think they work really great for stenciling. I think they're really great for, for solid, strong punches of color and for making cool dotted backgrounds and it's, I think stenciling is honestly their their claim to fame. Um, but they're fun, they're cute, they're, I don't know, I think they're kind of expensive for the set, but when you think $4 a piece, they're about the same as what you pay for a handle and a applicator from some other brand. So it's up, just up to you whether it's um, worth it to you. So there you've seen them in action. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to help you out if I can. Um, check out Local King Rubber Stamps YouTube channel. They have so many wonderful, this is another one of their stamps. I wasn't happy with any of these when I was doing them and, and I tossed them in the scrap pile and now when I'm looking at them, I'm like, oh, they're kind of cute actually. <laughs> You know how that is? You know, you don't like something when you're working on it, then you're like, two days later you see it as it's like in the trash can, and you're emptying your trash, and it's like, well, why did I throw that away? That's actually, that's not that bad. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. I don't know. Gosh, I haven't done a review in for so long, I am just like out of practice. Look at my fingers. Is this normal? Do your fingers look like that? Let's do a quick little uh, review of our samples again, just so, uh, just so you can see. Again, we've got um, some of the raindrop backgrounds, either wax resist, these two are wax resist, these are just lifting up the ink. These blenders um, are meant for dye-based inks. I asked about pigment inks and distress oxides and Lisa said you can use them, however you need to wash the brushes every time or the sponges every time you use those because they'll get hard and when you wash them they will poof up really big and you gotta let them dry before you use them again. So I think they're probably, I didn't I didn't use them for that because I'm like well I'm not gonna do that, I'm not gonna wash these every time I use them, so I didn't, I didn't do that. Um, but you know, just because they're so they're so good for stenciling, I think I would just stick with dye based inks and use them for stenciling. I love the saturation of color, um, but they don't do the subtlety as well. 
they do great for stenciling because you can get those really crisp images and you can cover a huge amount of space at once. Uh, but for subtle, soft blending, I don't find them to be as easy to use as the brushes. Um, or even the ranger tool, surprisingly, which I thought that I would have a much easier time using the mushrooms. The mushrooms do have a little bit of a wobble. Um, it's not bad, but if you look at that, can you see how it wants to rock a little bit? That you're definitely going to feel that if you try to drag the ink versus pouncing the ink. So I just want you to be aware of what you're going to get and how it's going to how it's going to work. And I think like stenciling, I like the life changing brushes and I like the um, I like the magic mushrooms. But you certainly can get the job done with whatever blender you have. And I hope this encourages you to get your supplies out, play with them, and really try what you have before you decide if you need something else or not. That would be my number one recommendation because a lot of times things just keep coming out. You know, you get a new version of the same thing every few years. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's the same, sometimes it's worse. Sometimes one works for you really well and another one works for your neighbor really well. So um, hopefully I've given you enough info to go on there and you can make some wise decisions. I will link to these down below. Lisa gave me a coupon code that's good to the end of August. So um, if you're curious on that, check it out. And until next time, happy crafting!